If you work as a reseller in any capacity or volume, be it full-time or part-time, being productive and being good at being productive and being good at defraying all the risks that impinge upon your productivity, all the, the outside influences that come in to rob you of your time and focus is of absolutely critical importance. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about all of the the biggest risks the things in life that will come in and will do the most damage to your time and your productivity and offer some suggestions for how to overcome those and i'll try to keep it concise because there is a whole lot that can go wrong i'm just going to start on the level of your body your body is this wondrous machine that's evolved over millions of years to ruin all of your plans. The more proactive you can be in terms of your health, your energy levels, your physical well-being, your lack of injuries, the better off you are going to be. In terms of productivity, I'm not talking about the big ones getting sick, like seriously sick or getting seriously injured. Those are pretty obvious. Let's just talk about the everyday mundane stuff that goes wrong. In terms of time management, eating is huge. You have to eat two or three meals a day, depending upon how you eat and how much time you take to eat and whether you eat socially with others, that can represent a serious threat to your productivity. If you have to take an hour to prepare and then eat meals or make the Faustian bargain of, I'm gonna go spend too much money for takeout food that is not good for me, that will make me feel worse in the long run. That's not good either. So what's the good solution? I think the good solution is to do some kind of meal prep ahead of time. If you wanna focus it on work for the week, prepare meals, put them in your fridge, have them ready to go. Every bodybuilder in the universe has videos on YouTube about how to do this in a cost-effective and relatively painless and easy way. So I recommend that you do that. Whenever I do that, I am always grateful to myself that I did it. I'll do it on a Sunday or a Monday, and I'll just pull out like a burrito bowl and eat it. Sometimes I won't even heat it up, I'll just eat it cold. A meal takes 10 minutes. As a general note, this is the subtext for all of this. You must be viciously protective of your productive time because you only get so much of it. On any given day, you have a certain amount of time over the course of the day where you're gonna have adequate energy and adequate focus and adequate motivation to do good work. So you have to protect that time as if it is the golden egg laid by the golden goose because that's what it is. That is where all of your money is coming from and that is what is allowing you to live your life, especially if you're a full-time reseller. So you have to protect it like it's your baby. Don't be a dick, but you have to be that focused and you have to think about these little calibrations like, can I pull a Tupperware out of the fridge and eat a meal in 10 minutes and get back to work or can I eat while working? That amount of productive time will stack up over, over the long haul. Think about if you took an hour out of every single day to eat lunch at your peak of energy levels right in the middle of the day. Over the course of a week, that's a, a, an enormous margin. And over the course of a month and a year, that's a, a gigantic difference. Low energy levels. This kind of keys in, actually a lot keys in to what I was saying about food. So are you sleeping enough? Are you eating enough? Are you eating the right foods? Are you drinking too much booze? Are you doing other things that are bad for you? You have to be super protective of your energy. This was true for me, even in my 20s. I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not an expert, but I am a vegan and I will say that that helps a lot. And also short of that, doing the whole foods thing, every time I'm diligent about eating whole foods, uh, consistently eating good food, not eating too much restaurant food, it makes an appreciable difference in my energy levels. And that is precious. That is as precious as time because without adequate energy to work, time is meaningless. And I don't want to precipitate a culture war in the comments. Everybody has their own ideas about food and diet and how it relates to well-being and energy. That's my little elevator pitch. I don't want to have a debate with you. Take it for what it is. Repetitive strain. This, this is, I cannot put into words how important this is. If you follow this channel at all, you are aware that I'm undergoing some pretty significant issues with chronic pain. My neck is 
I won't get into the weeds, but I have a bad neck. It is a massive, seemingly insurmountable, potentially literally insurmountable problem when it comes to reselling. If you're reselling, you must, must be aware of repetitive strain injury. This is how I have semi ruined my life is by having really shit posture for my entire life and not being smart about how I work, how I source, how I work at the computer, my how I hold my head when I'm looking at my phone, it all adds up and you can get away with it in the short term. You cannot potentially get away with it in the long term and the consequences are horrific. You don't want to end up where I am right now where even working listing for half an hour to an hour results in sometimes excruciating flare-ups of pain. You don't want to put yourself in those shoes and I'll eventually make a video about specifically what to do but the the cliff notes are don't have bad posture when you're working and if you develop pain symptoms even if they're fleeting pay attention to them and respect them and take breaks and hold your head up high uh, operate your spine as if you weren't drunk uh, just be smart be smart and research RSI research spinal health postural stuff tennis elbow whatever Whatever it is that is bugging you, it's not going to stop bugging you. Don't count on it not bugging you in the long term. Because what starts as a little pinprick, a little annoying mosquito buzzing around in your ear, becomes the hawk that is tearing the entrails out of you like Sisyphus every day. It's a big deal. Dealing with the space that you're working in, most of us work from home, so dealing with tidying up your house or your apartment can be a huge time sink. It can also be a huge mental health sink or whatever you want to call it. It just adds stress. Having this kind of constant ambient stress of living in the midst of a big pile of shit, uh, which is the situation that I keep finding myself in. And it's really frustrating and I kick the can down the road on cleaning up my place or cleaning up after myself and then it just mounts and mounts and mounts until suddenly I'm just awash in this sea of belongings drowning. It does cut into your productivity, especially if you're tripping over Ellen Edmonds shoes every time you need to walk to the bathroom. Put in the amount of time necessary, even just setting a timer for 20 minutes at the end of every day to kind of do some basic tidying up. That makes a huge difference. Or having a clean day, like Mondays were, um, until my neck got really bad, Mondays were my cleaning day. So every single Monday I would clean and tidy everything. I would vacuum, clean the bathroom, clean the kitchen, put everything away, get it all tidy. And then it would just go to crap. And then the coming Monday I would start over again. I don't know what the smartest way to deal with it is. You just have to appreciate that you are an entropy machine and you are causing your environment to just fall apart all the time. Things are out of place. So if you're kind of a naturally messy person like I am, you would be greatly benefited in your reselling business by getting a handle on it. Another big one is other people. So your social obligations, friends and family, this is huge. And this is especially problematic if you're full time. Other people's lives in which your life is wrapped up in, hopefully, like hopefully you have some kind of a social network. If you don't, then I guess you should look at that as a shadow benefit where you don't have to juggle these commitments and use that to work on your business a little bit more. I am not meaning to brag, but I have a lot of people in my life and that tends to create a lot of problems. If you are self-employed, the majority of people in your life probably are not self-employed. They are probably employed, which means they may not appreciate the level of commitment that it takes to be full-time or even to be part-time. They may not fully or at all respect your commitment to do that. So you have to develop boundaries. You have to develop the ability to say no and to set a clear expectation that you are not to have your time robbed. Uh, that people are not entitled to your time. People are not entitled to just come in and demand that you talk to them or do something for them or do something with them. You have to be able to be unavailable. You also have to be willing to pay the social price of being unavailable. If you know that you have to set aside eight hours a day to resell in order to pay rent, if somebody comes in and wants a whole bunch of your time, wants to talk 
to you on the phone for two hours because they have some problem in their personal life, you must be able and willing to say no and to deal with the consequences. Because the consequences of saying yes and being a puppet to all of these people and being a rag doll that people can use for your attention or your personality or time or whatever, that's a bad situation. That is a losing situation. And you need to maintain friendships and you need to maintain uh, relationships that you have with family, whatever. If you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, it takes time and it's a good investment of time. I'm not one of these these hustle, hustlepreneur guys who says, cut out every toxic influence on your life. If somebody wants you to go bowling with them, tell them to fuck off, that you're an entrepreneur and that you have to work. Uh, don't be that person, but also just don't be spineless and don't be somebody's pet. Another huge productivity sink is the software and hardware that we have to use as resellers. And everything and anything can and will go wrong when it comes to electronics. So if you list on eBay, their user interface will just magically change. All of a sudden, the way that you were working no longer is how you are going to be working. So there's a tendency for these little tweaks to come in on system updates that force you to relearn how to do simple tasks. Also, the system itself is so Byzantine and confusing that you almost need like a four dummies guide to use the site. Everything is tucked away in some sub menu somewhere. It can be a huge time sink just to do little simple tasks. Same goes with all the other reselling platforms. Amazon is even worse. Your hardware can malfunction. Sometimes your printer will simply not work. Uh, the formatting will be messed up or there is a wire crossed somewhere or it won't turn on or you ran out of ink. So that when it prints, it's like all messed up. And I use a thermal printer now. Uh, even that's not foolproof. Sometimes I have to print a label that requires the inkjet printer. So if I'm short on ink, then now I have to go to Target to get the thing. It costs 30 bucks. That takes an hour. There's also the problem of shit just loading slow. I cannot tell you how much of my life has been sacrificed to the god of the spinning loading wheel. I don't know what you can really do about that. That kind of is just this structural problem of working with electronics. I think electronics are simply just a minefield that we all have to walk and you have to factor in that element of just stuff constantly goes wrong. And finally, there's this other overarching consideration of your mood, your attention, what you do with your attention. This is a huge problem for me. Motivation, focus, wanting to work, wanting to do it, wanting to do good work and consistent work. I just put out a video that's kind of about this, so I won't be too redundant, but you have to bring yourself to a place mentally where you want to do the work or accept that you have to. So a big, big, big leech on my focus, productivity, and time is wishing things were easier. Just wishing that it wasn't so difficult to make money consistently. Uh, this is maybe not a feeling that you share. It's sometimes an overpowering feeling for me. It's a, a feeling so strong that it, it does actually occasionally prevent me from doing work if I let it. It's a totally valid feeling and you have to simply set it aside. You have to just compartmentalize it as Maybe I assign this feeling to some kind of political project later or enthusiasm or interest or whatever, but in terms of my responsibilities as a reseller and the immediate tangible need of making money, I cannot be thinking about this and I cannot be feeling this right now to a level where it's interfering with my ability to work. You just have to ignore it. Your hobbies, interests, and other projects can pose a mortal threat to your productivity in reselling. I have a lot of those. I'm interested in a lot of stuff. And if you let them, those interests will completely captivate you at the expense of reselling. It's legitimately a conundrum because you need those things in your life if you want to be normal or anywhere close to happy, I think. You have to be interested in things other than yourself and your own problems. You have to be focused outside somewhere. So how do you juggle all of this? How, what's the answer? What's the, the hack, the trick to actually be able to resell consistently 
under threat of all of these contravening influences. It's just what I said. You have to be very, very, very proactive about protecting your productive time as it's available to you. So every time you know you're going to have a chunk of time where you're probably going to be able to focus on work, you must take advantage of it. Take full advantage of all of the available productive time that you have because all of this plus the hundreds of thousands of other things that can go wrong in life will come in and take it away from you. And a lot of the time, there's nothing you can do about it. So the time that's available to you, use it. I don't mean for this video to be all doom and gloom. It's clearly possible to manage your time and be a reseller at whatever level you want, as long as you're intelligent and you're willing to set certain boundaries and make certain sacrifices, you can do it. Uh, plenty of people do it. And you just have to accept that life is hard, the economy is hard, and reselling is really hard. It's a lot harder than it a lot of the time looks on YouTube. So if you're willing to have the discipline to do it uh, on multiple different fronts, and you have the patience to do it, and you have the work ethic, then just being smart about time management is gonna give you a gigantic upgrade. Life happens.